everyone, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy, and today I'm going to be um, showing you how to apply a transfer onto this furniture piece that I'm working on. So this piece was painted in a base of Dixie Belle paint, and um, it's a mixture of Dixie Belle paint and aubergine and muscadine wine and tea rose is how I got to these custom colors here. The transfer that I'm working with is the new Lush Floral 2 transfer by Redesign with Prima. And this transfer comes in several large sheets like this. And I'm going to take and cut some of these florals apart and kind of place them so they look custom to my furniture piece. So I usually start with the largest piece of my transfer when I'm building up layers and cutting a piece apart and layering, layering it onto a furniture piece. So I've already started with this large floral here up here in the corner. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lay on my next one. Like I said, this comes in several different pieces, so I just look for the appropriate size and colors that I want to try to tie into my piece. I really like the look of these bright greens up against my purple, so I'm going to be using some of those. But I think for my next piece, I want to use this flower right here. I love that it's got the purples, but I'm also going to get some contrast with this white background here. So um, the transfer comes in two sheets. It's got a white backing sheet and then this clear adhesive piece. And that's what my transfer is actually attached to. So once I take this white backing piece off, my transfer is going to attach to whatever I put it onto. Um, when you're putting your transfer onto a painted surface, you want to put it directly onto your raw paint. So I have no clear coat or no wax over my paint. This is just my raw paint here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of roughly place my transfer. And I want this to kind of wrap the corner of my furniture piece. So I'm thinking kind of down here like this. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this over the curvature of my furniture piece as well. So I'm gonna move you guys in so you can see my transfer rather than me. And we're going to work this transfer onto this furniture piece. All right, let me get my camera adjusted there. Okay, all right, so like I said, I'm going to point this downward because I want these leaves to kind of point downwards. I don't want to lose those by overlapping them with my um, transfer. And I can overlap this onto this rose that I've got up here. So if it covers a little bit of this leaf here, that's going to be okay. They can layer on top of one another. And then since I'm kind of aware of my location, I'm going to go ahead and take off that white backing sheet. And I will place this right where I want it. Now I'm going to go over the lip on this drawer, which is this piece right here. And it's got a little bit of curve on it. So when I'm doing that, I like to start with my flat portion first, and then I will work my curve in small sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to my flat portion up here. This is a tool, um, the applicator tool, that comes in the package with your Redesign with Prima Transfer. And so I'm just rubbing it right onto my surface. It doesn't take a whole lot. If um, you're having to rub too much, there's probably a problem with your transfer. It could be that there's too much moisture in the air or moisture on the surface. Any moisture is going to inhibit your transfer from attaching. So now with my fingers, I'm gonna uh, hold this over this curve here and then I can rub it in to this crevice so it conforms. And then I can go down and go into the flat surface of this drawer molding here. You can also choose to cut your transfer apart if you prefer. And then I'm gonna come below this molding and get that flat portion right there. And I just work this in small sections, small sections at a time, conforming to my molding as I go. So now I'm gonna come work this over here and I can see it as it's detaching from the clear backing sheet. See right there, it detached itself and my backing sheet has now come loose from a part of my transfer and that's okay. Now I'm gonna come down here and we'll work this part onto the flat part of the drawer because next I'm gonna come and I'm gonna wrap the corner of this furniture piece here. It's got a nice curved edge and I don't want it to attach too far because if I get this part attached back here, that I'm not gonna be able to get it to go into some of the moldings that are on my piece. And I wanna make this conform. So I've got a little indentation right here. And I'm gonna press my transfer into this indentation and then rub it off of the backing sheet into there. And that's gonna cause it to take perfectly to that indentation. And 
And the little popping issue here is the air getting in between and my transfer is detaching from my backing. So now that it's in that indita indentation, I can go ahead and take this rest and wrap it all the way around. And then I can work it out off of the backing sheet as well. And I can start to peel this backing sheet away. And as I do, it will reveal if there's any portions that aren't well attached. So this little edge right here, I need to work a little bit more. So as I go, if I see any portions, I go slowly, peel away my, my backing sheet slowly. And as I see sections that may not be as well attached as they should be, I will come back and work them again. Have a little bit of clear coat on my stick here. I've used this one before. There we go. Like I said, it turns a little bit darker as it detaches from the backing sheet. Having this loose will help me to get around this corner because then I won't... There, see how that pops up like that? And now I can come work this corner a little bit easier. And then start pulling this backing paper up from over here nice and attached into all the curvature, all the moldings on my piece. You want to take your time, especially when you're applying a transfer over a, um, some curvature on your piece, any kind of moldings or anything. It can be a timely process. This is not um, a fast stick it one and done. You want to make your time to make, take your time to make sure it's done right. Some of the larger transfers that come in say six sheets, it can take me a couple hours to get those on and get them on perfectly. And then I peel away my, my backing sheet slowly and I've layered these florals here onto this piece. Now I'm gonna go over this with my fingers and I use my fingers to feel for any areas that might be still raised, not attached all the way. I will also use my fingernail and where this is on the edge of my drawer, I'm gonna score my transfer a little bit. And that lets me kind of push it into the drawer edge. If you don't have fingernails, an X-Acto knife works great for this or a razor blade. But the transfer is so fragile that I can just run my fingernail along it and it scores it perfectly into the edge of my drawer. I do the same thing down here for this drawer. Just give that a little score and then I can push it into the edge and same thing up top here. Come rub this with my finger. And I'm going to continue to layer a few pieces onto this floral here. This is just two flowers, but I'm going to keep going down the side of this piece. And the end result is really a custom look. It's going to be a one of a kind design to go with my custom Dixie Belle color mix. Okay, now I'm going to take my Dixie Belle finishing pad, which is this little abrasive pad here. And it's just a very mild abrasive. I cut, get these from Dixie Bell and I cut them into um, smaller pieces. So this is a fourth of the pad itself. And then I'm just gonna rub over the top of my transfer. Let me bring you guys in closer here because I want you to see that I've got this little, let me find a good spot that's got a good halo on it. Down here is better. Okay, I've got a little halo around the outer edge of my transfer here. And if I come in with my Dixie Belle finishing pad, I can work that and it actually helps to diminish that little halo around the edge of my transfer. It can be little edges where the adhesive comes up. I'm gonna make sure it's attached all the way. And then this really cleans up those edges very, very nicely so that when you put your clear coat over this, you can barely tell that it's not perfectly integrated in your piece. I'm also going to go over the transfer itself. And what that does, it just finds any places, um, especially on this, which is a fairly solid area that might have any air bubbles underneath it. Air bubbles are places that a clear coat can seep underneath your transfer and that can cause lifting. And after putting all this effort into putting a beautiful transfer on your piece, the last thing you want it to do is lift. So the biggest cause of that is having air bubbles under your piece. So once I burnish that transfer, oh, I got a little edge over here. 
So you can see how on some of the more detailed transfers, how this might be a time consuming process, but it is absolutely worth it to make sure you get the best application possible. I'm gonna do the same thing on my lip here. Now this area, I wanna make sure that it's all attached with my fingers first, because my fingers will feel any areas where it's, you know, the adhesive is sticking up so I can press it down before I go over it with my finishing pad, finishing pad. That's not gonna notice that type of thing. So here's a good area where I'm gonna diminish this halo that's around the edge of my transfer. You can also use a really fine grade sanding sponge for this, but I like the finishing pad because it's not so rough that it damages my transfer or distresses it in any way, but it is enough to just get that little halo around my transfer. So this is where my hardware is going, so I'm not going to worry about that little spot, but you can see how my uh, halo has virtually disappeared along the edges where I've burnished this transfer. <laughs> So I'm going to keep working that, but let's go ahead and layer another floral onto this. And I think I want to go with a totally contrasting color. So this transfer has some gorgeous colors in it. And I'm looking for maybe like a rich red would be really pretty in it. So something like this here, or even one of these dark purples I'm looking at. That would be really pretty too. And I'm just going to taper them down the side of this piece here. So you can kind of see the look I'm going for. I think I like this guy here. I like the purple has a little bit of the reds in it because then I think I want to use this piece here too. So you can use a pair of scissors and I can cut this transfer into as many pieces as I'd like. And really build it into a custom design. So now I'm going to take this purple floral that I chose. It's a little bit smaller than this here and smaller still than this first one I started with. And let's go ahead and kind of dry fit it. Right, I want it onto that corner, a little bit overlapping the one above it. And then I think I'll put that bright red flower right here. And that'll be a really pretty look and that'll be done for this side. So now I can remove my transfer from the backing sheet, peel that apart. And we're gonna repeat the process we did on the same um, transfer above. So I'm just going to place it right here, overlapping a little bit. And I'm going to start again working my flat surface first. So working this here. And then it doesn't really matter whether I choose to do this here, but I'm going to go ahead and work downwards into the curvature of my drawer, onto the next drawer. That's just a small piece. And then it detaches right away from my backing sheet here. You can see it's detached. You can see how quickly this section is gonna go on for just that small flower. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure it's all attached down here. And then I'll come start wrapping it on to this curve. Into that crevice again. Using my tool to get it all mold it around the curve of this side and then I can wrap it all the way. This one's going to go pretty quickly. Air bubbles are your friend when you're attaching a transfer. The air bubbles get underneath the transfer or not underneath the transfer, but rather in between this clear backing sheet and the transfer itself. And that helps detach them from each other. So I'm pulling this gently, making sure that all my edges are attached. And then I can see right here, I'm gonna be able to lift this up and I've got a beautiful purple flower detail on here. I love that. And then once again, I'm going to go ahead and go over it with my fingers and just working over it with your fingers will help diminish some of that transfer or some of that halo as well. So I'm going to work it over with my fingers, give it that little score with my fingernail to get it into the edge of the drawer. Like I said before, you can also use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade for that. 
Those work great. Sometimes when all my fingernails are broken, I will pull out some of those tools. So I really pay attention to every area of my transfer, making sure it's all attached. I'm working it into this crevice right here. See how I've got this molding, a fluting detail along my piece? I worked it in there. And let's go ahead and put on our next flower and then we'll burnish these together. I feel like this is pretty well attached and I can put that one last flower here. So I'm looking at this one because I really like the reds and the purples and it contrasts with everything I've got on there so far. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. But I don't know if I want to use the stem that's attached to it. He might be kind of out of place, but I can cut just the flower part off and then I can save the stem to use in another place. I always stay, save my transfer scraps because they can come in handy when you want to create some really custom designs. So say if I had this larger flower, now I've got a stem I could put on it somewhere else and make that a unique piece. So I'm going to save this little stem I cut off and I'm just going to use the top of the flower. And I kind of want it to go right here in between these two that we just attached. So I'm going to take it away from the white backing sheet. I'm going to overlap it onto the ones we've already got. And just like that, I'm going to place it. Now this one's going to go on really easily because I'm not trying to work it around any curvature on my piece. Just with my little transfer tool, I'm going to rub that on. Really should only take a single pass, maybe two, to get that rubbed on. And then I can come in here and start pulling away my backing sheet. And that one transferred really easily. And same thing, I'm going to rub over it with all of my fingers. Rub over the entire surface with my finger. And then we'll come in and use our um, finishing pad to burnish the transfer. Okay, so this is my finishing pad from Dixie Bell, and I'm going to come out in here and help get rid of some of that halo around my flowers. Make sure I have no air bubbles underneath. Burnishing the transfer is really a combination of going over it with my fingers to feel for any areas that might be lifted and then using this finishing pad. And burnishing is an important step in putting your transfer on properly. And that blends seamlessly into the flowers above it. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of greenery along the edges here. And I've got a few loose leaves that I can add in because I really like the green against the purple. So like this guy here is a beautiful green leaf. And these, um, so I'm going to cut these out. We'll go ahead and use a few of these pieces. And this way I can really customize it to my furniture piece. And then I can kind of decide where I want to place them. So I kind of like this leaf in here. And that way it'll layer with this leaf that was already part of the flower. And I'll add a second one in there. So let's go ahead and put this guy on. It's going to go over the top of my flower a little bit. And then it helps these, it helps bring these together so they really look like they were a part of one seamless transfer by adding some of these smaller pieces in. And I'm layering this right over the top of another transfer and it attaches beautifully. Same thing, use my fingers to make sure that's all pressed down. And then I think I want to put this guy kind of down here. So I've spaced out some of my greens and my flowers. I'm going to layer this right on top of that purple into the crevice of my drawer. It will wrap the corner a little bit right here. And that backing sheet will peel away really easily. And 
And I've got a really pretty custom design that tapers down the corner of my drawer side and looks like very organic and natural. So I love that. I love layering transfers to create a really custom look for my furniture piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish burnishing it. this. From here, I can go ahead and put a clear coat over all of these and they will be a permanent part of this furniture piece sealed in under the clear coat um, and super durable. So that was a way to cut apart your Prima transfers and make custom designs. Um, I love the new Lush Floral 2 transfer. You can pick that up from redesignwithprima.com or find a retailer near you that carries these.